There was a couple of clubs, and especially like when uh, this new wave of British heavy metal came around, and there were like these bat. There were some great bands, a couple of really good bands coming out of Manchester. I remember there was one called Fardis. Uh, <laughs> there was a band called Silverwing too. They had lots of smoke bombs and stuff, and, you know. But there was most. There was a club in Manchester that was called Chili's, and that was kind of the. Uh, the rock club, that was the rock scene and stuff. And you, if you played there, you were doing okay. We were just from school, you know, school friends and stuff. And um, we, we, you know, we, we, we weren't very good. But, um, you know, we started writing songs to get, you know, and trying to make original songs. We were doing cover songs, like every band does and stuff like that. But um, I remember there was a, 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 rec, a, a magazine called Sounds and they picked up on what, this single that we did called Red Sunset. The band was called, finally got a name for the band, which was called Tora Tora, and I, I don't know where the name came from. It didn't really mean it that much to us. It was just like a cool name or whatever. And um, Sounds picked up on it, and it went to like number one. They had a heavy metal chart and stuff. <clears throat> you know, and there's a whole bunch of great bands in there, and we were like, wow, we're number <laughs> We, we did it, we made it, you know, it was like, um, but that was like the early days, that was all in Manchester, England and stuff, where I'm from, and uh, there was some great times. First one, you know, I, I think I was like seven years old, and you know, and I got a record player and it, it just came, this record kind of came free with it, it was like a little butt record, you know, and it was 76 trombones at the Big Pearl, you yeah. <laughs> know, but it sounded great. You know, I don't know. I forget who who it was, the artist who re recorded it. But and then you know the rock stuff started after that because it's like, hey, I've got a record player. You know? But the first one I bought was uh, uh, Led. Yeah, well, I'm showing my age now, but it was like Led Zepp two um, and Jailbreak. The next one was Jailbreak and Lizzie, and I was completely. Amazed. I mean, I must have been like nine, going on ten, and it was like, wow, you know, it just took my life over. I was like, this is what I am gonna do, you know, no matter what. I think I was around. I think I started sort of late. It was sort of around the age of like uh, eleven or twelve or something, maybe. And because um, you know, before that, I'd started playing on the settee and stuff. And, the couch and my grand's knitting needles and stuff like that, you know. And I don't know. It just uh... and then my dad bought me this, you know, this kid had a drum kit down the street, and he was he turned into a keyboard player, so he had this drum kit he didn't really want anymore. So my dad went and bought that for like ten pounds, did it up. All the skins were all slashed. There was all you know, dust all over. But we did it up, and you know, I started playing, and um, you know, it, it, I was, you know, in my bedroom playing and stuff. But I think they let me go at it. You know, my my parents were really cool about things. You know, they didn't really, you know, I kept, I'd come home from school and I'd be playing away for like two, three hours and stuff, headphones on, trying to figure everything out. You know, so it was like they put up with a lot of stuff. The funny story, actually, we used to live in a house that was connected to another house. In England, they have these what they call bungalows, where it's like that. And there's a, one house, the side of the house is there, and the other, that's another house. And this house went on the market for sale, and uh, it was up on the market for sale for years. But every because every time uh, a realtor or an estate agent would come round, my dad would say, "Sam, get on your drums." So nobody wanted to live next to this racket that was going on. Yeah. But it's, you know, one o'clock in the afternoon, I'm not, I don't want to play. <laughs> My dad's going, go on, get on there. There was this other band from Manchester, they were called A to Z, A to Z, and they had a record deal. They'd already been on the road with like Black Sabbath and uh, Iron Maiden, and they had this, uh, they, they needed a drummer and I went in there and I got it. So, you know, but after that it started to, you know, uh, uh, it started to get legs. It started to move a little bit. You know, it was like there was, I get a, I, you know, I, I left my job in the building trade and I was up on roofs in the middle of the winter. You know, 
<laughs> freezing to death, you know, and all this crap, <laughs> getting paid nothing, you know, and uh, it, it just kind of escalated from there, really. And they said, you know, okay, you've got the job and everything. And, and we went out on the road with girls' school and stuff, and that was great, you know. It's like we're, we're touring, we're actually, um, we're actually gonna leave Manchester and play a gig. That's great. You know? <laughs> yeah, it was all cool. It, it, it didn't last that long. We just did the one tour, and then I moved to London because I got the, you know, I got a taste of it and stuff. And I thought, well, I can't just stop now. I'm not, definitely not going back working on the construction. So I moved down to London, and we, uh, we, we. Um, there wasn't much going on there too. There was a band called Titan and all. Uh, Titan, they were they were pretty good, um, and they needed to finish their album that they were doing at the time. They'd done I don't know eight nine tracks, and it was kind of like, well, um, yeah, well, uh, finish up and do the tracks and stuff like that. So that that was good. But we did like one show in a year in Belgium. It was kind of, oh, this is good, you know. But they were a really, really good band. I mean, they're great. It was Kevin Riddles from Angel Witch, Cal Swan was in the band, some great guitar players and all. So it was primed to be a really good band. Um, but, you know, one thing led to another. Well, it, I got the lucky break after that. I mean, I was in London. I wasn't really thinking about doing anything, but, you know, it, it just kind of happened. I answered an ad. Like I said, with Titan, we hadn't done anything in a year, and it was fizzling out, and there was an ad in a local newspaper for a uh, music paper, uh, Sounds, in the classified section. It said, you know, if uh, a drummer wanted, if you don't hit hard, don't apply and stuff. So I thought, well, I hit hard, so I'll give it a go. <laughs> and it turned out to be that, ba you know, ACDC, so I, that was, a, you know, <laughs> it was such a gigantic step, uh, and then from there it, it was just it, it was just a roller coaster. It was like being in a you know a washing machine. It was like, you know it just everything just took off, you know. And, um, and then things. I was in the band for quite a long time. I, it was like eight, nine, yeah, eight and a half years, and and. Uh, I think I became a little bit complacent about the whole thing because um, I loved playing drums and it, it wasn't very fulfilling after a while. Not to take away from them because, I, you know, they're ACDC for God's sake and they're great people as well. But I think they saw this lack of uh, interest. I became complacent about the whole thing and you can't really work in a band like that being like that. Um, so I got, you know, I, I got lucky and stuff and I managed to move on and uh, I met Ronnie you know I met Ronnie when we were playing shows we did some of the Monsters of Rock shows and stuff together but, but you know there's a lot of people out there who can play too you know but it, I think it was one of those situations where I just kind of fitted in at the right time I was lucky you know it was a uh, kind of happenstance so um, it worked out with Ronnie and it was great, you know. It's just it's different now, but it, obviously. But it was just some great, fantastic years. So now we're doing what we're doing now. There was UFO. I was Ronnie went back after I first joined Dio. He he got an invitation from Black Sabbath to do uh, go back and uh, uh, play with them again, and you know, rightly so, obviously. Um, and I did some other things in between there. It was like UFO, and I did some. I played with another band called Rhino Bucket. So there's been a lot of bands. <laughs> Focus. What do you think about? Um, you know, heavy metal was heavy metal. You know, and there's still some great heavy metal bands around. I mean, you, you know, it's it. it you, you, oh, unfortunately, you've got Scorpions and Priest are, are calling it quits, but. Uh, to an extent, or in some form or another, but uh, yeah. I don't know. I'm old school. I like the old, the old stuff. But I mean, I do. There is some new bands that are really cool. Obviously, you know, there's a lot of great stuff out there. And uh, my daughter keeps me aware of this. It's fantastic to see them. I mean, they're like I, they remind me of when I was a kid. I mean, it's just like this, this great thing going on, you know. And you see them, and they're like, they're going to be carrying a flag, you know. And um, 
It's really important. I mean, they should know about this music. This was the music that, that, that created so many other things, so many other genres of, of, of metal, you know? And, and if you're talking about Ronnie, I mean, my God, he, he, he wrote the book, you know, as far as I'm concerned.